I hope you can see my PPT file now at the moment. And I'm going to talk about the city of Christians in Syria. But before going to the mains of the argument, I'm going to introduce the Christians in Syria and the demographic change and for the Syriacs. And the Christian population in Syria in the mid of the 20th century, it occupied about 15% of the total population of Syria. And it's gradually declined. And on the eve of the Syrian war in 2000, uh, 2011, it was less than 10% of the total population. And now we can estimate the Christian population occupied only 2.5% of the total population and 45,000 Christians remain in Syria. And by contrast, there are more Christians. They left the country and they, they become more diasporic population and across the continent. In the case of Syriac Christians, so they are in the North America, like uh, North American continent, such as the US and Canada, and some of them are in ASEAN in Australia. And many of them are in Western part of Europe, such as Germany, Sweden, and Belgium, and Netherlands, and so on. And then I'm briefly explaining for Syriacs. The Syriacs belong to the Oriental and Orthodox churches. So this is the sort of the chart of the denominations from the ancient period. And this part is the first one is ancient church. And then you can see Oriental Orthodox and Church of the East. These are the two denominations in the split in ancient times. The Syriac Christians belong to one of these churches. And the integral part of the Syriacs is the liturgical language, the language for prayer. And they use Syriac, it's called also Neo Aramaic. And this is a language it's, which root it's back to the language spoken in uh, Aramean kingdoms and Neo Assyrian Empire in ancient times. So these are the sort of geographical areas, these sort of two so called uh, their homeland covers. And obviously, it's the, these ancient kingdoms existed before the time of the Jesus Christ. So, and therefore the Syriacs, so they used to be pagans, they are not Christians, and they inherited pagan heritage of cultural heritage of so-called Assyrians, Arameans, and later converted Christianity. These are the sort of the the basic idea who are Syriacs. And nowadays, so Syriacs seek their own ethnic identity. Some say we are Assyrians, others say Arameans. No, no, we are Chaldeans. So there is no unified view of the ethnic identity of the Syriacs. And there are sort of the the claim of the D3, Assyrians, Arameans, Chaldeans. But it's, um, things are more complicated to use the word separately. Therefore, in this presentation, I use the term Syriacs as an umbrella term to cover all these three different kinds of ethnic identities. And Syriac Christians, the, it has been existed in Syria since ancient times. And this map covers the area called dead cities. And it's not far away from Aleppo, the second largest city of Syria. And this, the ancient Christian village ruins exist close to the Turkish border. And from Aleppo to the ancient Christian ruins, so we can still see, I'm not sure if we can see it now because it's now the battlefield. So, but there's some the archaeological sort of remains and cultural heritage still existed. 
and it is two century Roman called so-called Roman Lord. It leads to the Christian villages, and from Christian villages towards the Antioch is the ancient patriarchal site of the Syrian Christians. And in the 20th century, so I jumped the sort of the <laughs> over nearly 2000 years, but in the 20th century, the beginning of the 20th centuries, at the time of the sec, uh, First World War, the Christians in the Ottoman Empire had this terrible religious persecution. And Syrian people called this Seifo. Uh, Seifo means in, uh, the year of sword in Syria. And they called this sort of persecution as genocide nowadays. And the killing was the most intense in the case of Syria people. And in the present, the present Southeastern Turkey. And the many Christians, so they were, for, were forced to leave their homeland. And some, many of them are killed and children are abducted and women are forced to marry the Muslims. And these are their claims. And the Christian survivors of this persecution and couldn't return to home and couldn't remain in the present Turkish territory. And they are forced to immigrate to neighboring countries such as Syria. It's, Syria absorbed a lot of Syriac population. This is a map of present Syria. And Syria Christians has been existed in the Western part of Syria for a long time. But many of the people who left uh, southeastern part of the present Turkey, they came to the eastern part of Syria in this area. And they settled. And even now, the eastern part of Syria contains a lot of Syria Christian population. So those people, they came from the Turkish side towards Syrian side, the eastern part of the land. Now I finally come to the aim of the talk. And I'm going to analyze the dynamics of the formulating Syriac identity and the interpretation of the 1950s Syrian genocide for the contemporary purposes. So I set up the two timelines. One is before the Syrian war. And the second line is after the, uh, the, the break up, uh, uh, Syrian war broke up, broke. And the first timeline, the before the Syrian war, the memory of the genocide or the persec Christian persecution has survived by oral transmission within the local communities based on eyewitness account. In those days, there's no commemoration event of the persecution or no commemoration many monument existed in Syria. And after, the, uh, after starting the Syrian war, when influence of the Syriac diaspora organizations and population had uh, growing and it was maximized in 2015, it was the centennial anniversary of the 1915 Syriac persecution or genocide. And the struggle for genocide recognition, so they appear, this is genocide, yes. And that's kind of the uh, appeal of the Syriac diaspora community. It's organized by, particularly in Western Europe. And then the memory of genocide transformed and it became the communal property of all Syria Christians, wherever they are. And the memory of the genocide became the instrument for shaping Syria collective identity. And I just pick up one example of the oral memory of the, the Seipo the Syriac persecution or genocide. And the example is the siege of the one village. The village is called Ainwald. And I just briefly uh, explain it. 
and Ottoman soldiers, it means Turkish soldiers, and Kurdish tribesmen marched to the village of Einwald. Einwald contained not only the villages of, from Einwald, but also included the population of the neighboring villages. And at the end of the June 1915, so their enemies, it means Turks and Kurds, opened the fire. And the Christians tried to defend themselves and they built stone walls and barricaded themselves within the village. And even this really difficult situation with the pure ammunition and shortage of food and fear, the battle went on for six days. Christians never surrendered. And according to the narratives, so why they survived? And the one big reason is God protects Christians. So the Christians are attacked from the all directions, but they survived, they never surrendered. And the second reason is they think, the Syriacs think, and justice was on the side of Christians. And the one of the proof is told in the narratives is that the both Christians and Muslims witnessed saints in the full armor on the white horses coming out of the village church to drive Muslims away from the village. And the cease end, both sides signed the ceasefire and by choosing trustful mediator for the Syrian Christians. And this is the, the courageous uh, shape. However, he had Syrian Christian origin. To summarize, the, um, the Syriac narratives before the war, yes, I, I, I collected before the war, it depicts the same for persecution from the perspectives of the contemporary relations between the Christians and the Muslim neighbors. Contemporary means the time they talk about the stories. And the battle was the between the Christians and the Muslims. So it's confirming their religious identity, their religious groups, serious religious groups. And this also supported by the, the explanation, God protects Christians. It means, Christians means Syriacs. They, they defined Syriacs as a religious group. And they described Turks and Kurds, their attackers, who had a slay and deceptive characteristics. Therefore, they attempt to steal Christians' properties, abduct women and children, and massacre them. And even such a situation, Syria says we defended themselves with strength and braveness. They are not just helpless victims. So they try to seek the equality to Muslim neighbors. And then I move on to the diasporic Syriac population and their condition, uh, conditions and their the interpretation of safe genocide. Their immigrant population increased since 1960s. And many of them went to Western Europe. And now, these immigrant populations are now three, third or fourth generations. And these just for Syriacs in the West, so developed the hybridics of identity influenced by the so host societies. They, they speak the language of the host society, they're educated there, they mastered cultures and so on. And then they have the, the identity crisis. Who are we? We are the three the descendant of immigrants, but our connection to homeland is diluted. We have no physical contact to homeland anymore. And we don't have much cultural heritage anymore. And then here, the memory of the 1915 Syriac genocide. So it's become important because it is associated with their lost homeland and they heard the stories of the safe war, the persecution from their elders, and it's a sort of the communal asset, communal experience for them. Therefore, they try to promote this 
for their uh, new identities. And any of the diasporic population or refugees and asylum seekers, their families dispersed across the countries and they cannot meet each other. Therefore, the only the way they contact with their family members are the sort of set social network services. And they use it every day basis to say hello to their family members. And this method is useful for discussing about the identities and the memory of the genocide. And in and, and the cyber platform, so the memory of cyber becomes the sort of point of discussion among the, these diasporic Syriacs and to explain their diaspora, why they left the country and why they are in the foreign land. And uh, also explain the communal crisis they have experienced in the present places, such as the fear of the extinction of their community. Because it's now, their community is still small in each location, each country. And they are fully assimilated into the host country. And they lose the culture and the language and tradition. And there, it means that it, it is extinction of the community and Syria community. So they fear all the time such kind of extinction of their community. Therefore, it's not only the 1915 of the persecution, they lost the land and they fear the extinction of their community, but also it's a present problem for the diasporic Syriacs. And for this Syriac immigrant and the diasporic population, the 1915 genocide is a point of reference for defining themselves as descendants of the survivors of the killing. And the memory of the massacre becomes the symbol of their connection to their homeland and the Syriac national community. It's actually the Syriacs are spread all over the world. And then the, the immigrant population started to have the, uh, to apply the, the lobbying politics. And they appeared to their home countries and the government and the parliament to recognize the safe of 1915, the persecution as genocide. And the first time came to them and uh, at the time when the Turkey, Turkey applied to EU membership. And it culminated in the mid of the 2000s. In 2007, the International Association of Genocide Scholars recognized the 1915 genocide, including Syriac genocide SAFO. And the European Parliament as well organized a conference in 2007 for the SAFO genocide. And the Syriac's argument in these occasions at the forums, SAFO is a forgotten and ignored genocide because it's an oral tradition. They, they transmitted the stories within the community and, and it, they didn't sort of to publish all these kind of the stories you know, in the world wide. Therefore, it's forgotten and ignored the genocide. They also say they are victims of the massacre and they are forced to leave the homeland and therefore they lost the property and the land. And they are, still suffering, they are still suffering the pain due to their diasporic condition and the memory of the table. And the organizations of the diaspora communities of Syriacs and these immigrants, they construct the memory which they transformed already, uh, already transmitted stories into the transnational communal property. And they, they used the safe for memory as an instrument for shaping their collective identity. And the second tide came in 2015. It is at the time of the Syrian war. 
and the patriarch of Syriac Orthodox Church, he took the leading law in addressing Syriac's current need in Syria. So it was the time the Syria was attacked by ISIS or Daesh, and the Christian population was targeted by Aish for the persecution. And they appealed. So it's the second safe second genocide for the Christians. And the Syriac patriarch toured all the Syriac community in the different parts of the world and urged the, uh, the commemoration of the centenary of the Seipo. It's the hundred years of anniversary of the Seipo. And they, he used the opportunity to save Christians by obtaining international recognition of Seipo atrocities. And at the time, they criticized Turkey from the viewpoint of Syrian security. That as you know, Turkey has a military advancement in Syria. And it, they had some kind of truth of this campaign. And Syrian parliament recognized the Armenian the Syriac genocide in 2020. So since then, the Syriac population organized commemoration ceremonies and established monument, safe monument, commemoration monument in, in the Christian quarters in Syria. It's, it's, this one is in Damascus and others uh, in different parts of the Europe. But however, Syriac people are not unified to pursue this kind of campaign of safe for example, the Syriac Orthodox Church and the Syriac Catholic Church, they tried to, the, they agreed to this, uh, to set up the safe day on 15th of June. But many different kinds of organizations of Syriacs, they use, they use a different date for the commemoration of the genocide. And also, they use different terms to define this, they call it genocide. Some of them say, this is Syriac genocide. Others say it's Aramean genocide. And some others say it's Assyrian genocide. There's no unified view among the Syriacs. This suggests it's a division of the Syriacs. Therefore, they cannot launch the sort of very sort of influential and strong campaign of the same and also, this is a risky choice because of the utilizing SAFO as a political tool. So as you know, as the Turkey shows the apparent denial, denial of the SAFO genocide, they never ever acknowledge it. And in the, in the 20, 2015 campaign by the Patriarch of Syriac Church, he actually articulated the political alignment with the Assad regime. So then in the Syriacs in the Western part, they are living in the Western part of Syria, they might be safe uh, with this political uh, articulation by the patriarch. However, there are still a lot of population there in the Eastern part of Syria. This is an area controlled by the Kurdish population, Kurdish autonomist. They call it the Western Kurdistan, Rojava. And many Syriacs uh, living under this situation might be, might have the possibility of their position it would be in danger because the Kurd Kurds might antagonize Christians because of the promotion of safe campaign. Yes. And the one of the incident uh, prove, proving this is an attack on patriarch and the Syriac patriarch in 2016. He came up to Northeast and the city of Kamishri for commemorating Seipo, and he was attacked. He was not injured. However, five Syriac Christians are killed, three are injured. Conclusion. In the Seipo, the the genocide or safe memory tells the transformation of Syriac identity. That before the outbreak of the Syrian war, the memory site of Seipo 
had been transmitted orally within, within the local communities. And the same stories reflect the relations between the Syriacs and their Muslim neighbors. And they tell the, the stories tell, they try to achieve the equal status in, in the past as well as the present. And the story proves their, uh, their attitude. And during the Syrian war, the Syriac diasporic population seek the ethnic identity of Syriacs, like such as Assyrians, Arameans, and so on. And this, uh, this identity has become transnational because mm, the Syriac population is in a diasporic situation. And in, they promoted the memory of safe war genocide and as a communal property and instrument of shaping Syriac collective identity wherever they are. However, this type of commemoration discourse affects the Syriacs in, in Syria, in particular, the those living in the eastern part of Syria. That's all. Thank you.